Hi, happy Sunday. It is Pastor Paul Anderson here at the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, where we believe God's blessings never stop flowing. It is Memorial Day weekend. We like to pause and thank God for all of those who paid the ultimate price of sacrificing their lives. We thank God for all of our persons who served in the armed forces and who have defended our Constitution and our United States against all foes, both domestic and foreign. We thank God for blessing their families and may he continue to smile upon them and give them his great mercy and his goodness. We thank God for you. Let us now hear our call to worship out of the book of Isaiah. He touched my lips with it and said, see, this coal has touched your lips. Now your guilt is removed and your sins are forgiven. Then I heard the Lord asking, whom should I send as a messenger to the people who will go for us? I said, here am I, send me. May we bow our heads in prayer. Father, we come to say thank you for blessing us to be in your house one more time. We invite the mighty, powerful presence of your Holy Spirit to be great in our midst. May all that we say and do bring you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. And so, Lord, we surrender our all to you on this day. Have your way in this service of worship. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, Mel Chorus, lead us into the presence of God as we worship Him in spirit and in truth. Come on, y'all.
Thank you so very much, brothers, for reminding us the importance of pressing towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You know, in all of our lives, you know, when we face with all the different challenges that we see throughout this world, as we've just come off the heels of so much that has happened in our country, when we've seen all the injustices, when we've seen uh, the anniversary of the murder of George Floyd, we have to press. All of us have to press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And in the process of that pressing, that means when you press, you're coming up against other pressures. The Bible tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual weakness and high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that when you've done all you can, you can stand. And the only way you stand is by pressing. So, brothers, thank you for reminding us to press. Thank you all who've pressed your way out this morning that you might have a moment to listen to the word of God and to share some moments with us in worship. I invite you to please look with me to a very familiar Old Testament passage, one that comes to us out of one of the major prophecies. The major prophecy that we're talking about comes to us out of Isaiah, the sixth chapter, verses one through 11 from the New Living Translation of the stated text. It's now the words of Isaiah who gives to us a message that I hope will resound in your life, a message that I hope will resonate in your spirit and one that will cause you to be able to ask the question that Isaiah asked. Maybe you can ask it and then hopefully you can answer as he did. Let us hear the word of the Lord from Isaiah, the sixth chapter, verses one through 11, the New Living Translation. It was in the year that King Uzziah died that I saw the Lord. He was sitting on a lofty throne. The train of his robe filled the temple. Attending him were mighty seraphims, each having six wings. With two, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they flew. They were calling out to each other. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heaven's armies. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Their voices shook the temple to its foundations. And the entire building was filled with smoke. Then I said, it's all over. I am doomed for I am a sinful man. I have filthy lips and I live among people with filthy lips. Yet I have seen the king, the Lord of heaven's army. Then one of the seraphims flew to me with a burning coal he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. He touched my lips and with it said, see, this coal has touched your lips. Now your guilt is removed and your sins are forgiven. Then I heard the Lord asking, who should I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? I said, here I am. Send me the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Let us pray. Father, we pray that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts will be acceptable in your sight. Lord, we thank you for being our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The words of the prophet Isaiah comes to us all. He begins to look at his situation in life. He realizes that he is a man that is wretched. He is a man that is sinful. He is a man that there is no way God would ever use him. He realizes that he is in the midst of people who are unclean. The Bible says that he says, my words are filthy and I am among people with filthy lips and filthy language. But yet and still, God does something so powerful. He allows one of those seraphims, one of those attendants who's at the altar where he sees the Lord, take a coal and put it upon his lips. And he says, now your sin is taken away. All of your sin is purged. And who will go for us? And Isaiah now realizes that he is in a position that he can go. And he says, here am I, send me. I want to ask you the question, can you say, here am I, send me? All of us, as we are finding ourselves in this holiday weekend, a weekend in which we pause in the United States of America to thank God for men and women who have served in the United States Armed Forces 
and for those who've made the ultimate sacrifice of not only giving of their time, but also their lives, and who lost their lives defending the Constitution of the United States, as well as the flag. So today we find out, as we pause to thank God for them, let's pause to find out, can you and I enlist in the army of the Lord? Our text on today begins to help us that uh, the word comes to us through and by the prophet Isaiah. And he says that he noticed that it was in the year when King Uzziah died that he saw the Lord. First of all, we must recognize that there was a man who was sitting on the throne who was a king by the name of Uzziah. And it is amazing in our lives how sometimes we see people from a natural perspective who have the highest office in the land, those who sit high, those that people hold great allegiance to. And so now it appears in the text that Uzziah is now dead and the seat that he was sitting on is now empty. That causes all of us to pause, to think and ask ourselves the question, is it sometimes that we will believe those who are sitting on man-made thrones to have more power than Almighty God. It is apparent in this text that he has ascribed to Uzziah a whole lot of power. He has ascribed to him a whole lot of influence. But now this king is dead, and that means he's a mere mortal. All of us must remind ourselves that human beings are mere mortals. They do not have the final say so. They do not have the final decision about your eternity, nor my eternity, nor the events that happen in our lives. They might have some say so, but we must be reminded that God has the ultimate word. Now, King uh, Uzziah has now died. And now Isaiah gets this vision and the vision that he sees is that there is another king. The Bible says that he saw the king of kings sitting on a throne high and lifted up and his robe filled the temple. This becomes the illustration that uh, uh, Uzziah needs to know that God is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords and his throne fills the temple and his robe does as well. Whenever you and I put God in the place where he needs to be, the one who sits on the throne of our lives, the one who is the king of kings, the one who is the Lord of lords, then we'll realize whatever he has to say is the final authority and it is the final word. In many of our lives, God has to move things, move people out of the way for us to really see God for who he is, for being the king of kings, the one who sits on the throne. Notice he says that, As he sees him sitting on the throne and he sees his robe and how his robe fills the temple, there are some attendants. He sees six of them and with two wings, they cover their face with two wings. They covered their feet and with two wings, they did fly. It is here that he begins to see that God has these uh, seraphims, uh, these guardians who are right there by his side and who are there for his beckoning call. So one of them, he flies over and he used tongs to take fire from off of the coals that he now sees in the presence of this king of kings. He takes the coals and he picks it up with the thongs and he places it on Isaiah's tongues. And as he places it on his tongue, he tells him, now all of your sins have been removed. Ah, what a powerful thing. It is through and by these uh, quote unquote fire, these coals that we see, they do the purification All of us know and can be reminded that last Sunday was the Sunday that we call Pentecost Sunday. We know on Pentecost Sunday, it was where we saw the spirit descending as a dove and we see it as flames of fire on all of these disciples. Now we see the fire of God and it is no accident that this text is one that talks about how God's spirit takes away, burns away the sin in all of our lives. He takes away uh, the tongs uh, from off the altar and he puts it on the tongue of Isaiah. And he says, all of your sin have been removed. Now you have nothing to do. But Isaiah, before this happened, he says, Lord, you cannot use me. That is like all of us. We make excuses. Lord, I've said some things I shouldn't say. 
I've been some places I shouldn't have gone. I've been around some people I should not have been around. And he begins to make excuses and and God lets him know, uh, I hear your excuses. And he says, but God, I've been around people who have filthy lips as well. They haven't said the right things about you nor about people. Then he gives him the remedy. He says that one of these seraphims is going to touch your tongue and all of your iniquity will be taken away. It's amazing what God's spirit does when he comes and he lights upon us. He takes away all the sin that was in our lives and he removes all of the iniquity and all of the bad things that have come from our mouths. You know, I do believe that when we have the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, he will take away those things from us that we shouldn't say. He will allow his fire, his presence to burn on us that we can't help but do the right thing. So now. We find out that his uh, quote unquote excuse has now been removed. And now since his excuse has been removed, Isaiah begins to give us a powerful word. The word that comes to Isaiah is that the Lord tells him, now you know what I can do. And Isaiah says, I have now seen the king of kings and I know your power. I know what you can do. You have removed everything from me. I know that you are the Lord of heaven's armies. And God, I know if I'm in your army and if you are the one who wants me to fight, everything will be all right. How many men and women through and by the move of God said they wanted to defend our constitution, wanted to defend our country. But I'm so happy that God used them to defend our country But God has a higher calling on all of our lives, not just to defend the United States of America, not just to defend our Constitution, not just to defend our flag, but to defend what God has said. And notice he tells him your defense is to allow your tongue to be used in my service. It's amazing that many of us forget and we need to remind ourselves that our tongue can be the most powerful tool that God has given to us. It is taught in many law enforcement agencies how all of us need to learn how to calm things down, how we need to learn how to diffuse what could be a confrontation, how we need to learn to de-escalate. That's the power of the tongue. We can use it to de-escalate. Notice how God de-escalates Isaiah. He lets him see that with my Holy Spirit, Oh, I can bring this thing where it needs to be. God wants all of us to use our tongues for his glory. In the passage, he says that I know that now I have been touched by you. And whenever we've been touched by God, God says, now, since you've been touched, I want you to be in touch with my word. I want you to be in touch with my purpose. I want you to be in touch with my mission. Now, Isaiah realizes that his sin has now been taken away. There's no more excuses. And so the Lord says, who will go and whom shall we send? This is a conversation that we see that Isaiah is letting us understand through and by this prophecy that the father, the son and the Holy Spirit says, who will now go and who will share this message? And as the question is being asked, Isaiah has now had all of those things that would have stood against him going to be a candidate to do what God had called him to do. He now realizes he's not no more the person that he used to be. You know, when all of us realize when God does something in our lives, we are not the person we used to be. There's been a transformation. In essence, what God did in these few verses He took Isaiah through a spiritual boot camp. He says, I want you to know that there are tests that you have to pass and you've just passed the test. The test is that you have been available. And because you're here and in my presence, I'm going to remove your sin. I'm so happy that God removes our sin, how God moved, removed Isaiah's sin. And now God tells Isaiah and he asks the question, who will go for us and who shall we send? The Trinity is having this conversation This is what we call Trinity Sunday. It is where we see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all working together in one. In this passage of Isaiah, we see that the Father is having the conversation with the Son, and the Holy Spirit is doing the purging work. 
On this Memorial Day weekend, we need to know that the Trinity is always at work. God the Father is always looking out at his creation. Jesus the Son has gone to Calvary's cross and has paid the penalty for all of our sins. God the Holy Spirit now puts fire on our lips that we have a burning to tell the story. Now Isaiah realizes that I have gone through boot camp. I am now the one who's ready to tell everybody about the goodness of the Lord. He says, who will go? And Isaiah steps up and says, here am I, send me. Isaiah was not drafted, but Isaiah became a volunteer. He became enlisted in the service of Almighty God. He said, Lord, I will enlist. I want you to use me to tell everybody about who you are, how you are a heavenly father who sits high and who looks low, how you are the son who went to Calvary's cross, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered unto Pontius Pilate, was crucified, buried, descended to the lower parts of the earth, took the keys of death, hell and the grave from Satan and now has all power in his hand. And now you have given me the power of the Holy Ghost on my tongue. And with that happening, God, I got to tell somebody about your goodness. Thank you, Mel Chorus, for reminding us how good God is and what God wants to do in all of our lives. I want to share with you, my brothers and sisters, the Lord is looking for all of us who will be willing to enlist to say, here am I, send me. I hope you today can say, here am I, send me, Lord. Send me because wherever you send me, I'll go. The Lord needs us to go out and to share in the highways and the hedges about the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and how God is a heavenly father who loves us so much so that when Jesus left, he said, I won't leave you alone, but I'll give you the promise of my spirit. On this Trinity Sunday, this Sunday during this holiday weekend, this weekend where you and I now have a few moments to tell God, God, here am I, send me. Men and women enlisted in the armed forces to say, here am I, send me. How many of us will enlist in God's forces to say, here am I, send me? God, use me to go out and to share the good news of the gospel. Help me to feed those who are hungry. Help me to clothe those who are naked. Help me to minister to the widows. Help me to minister to the widowers. Help me to reach out to the orphans. Help me to share the good news of how God has bread for every table. Help me, God, to be infused with your power that I can tell everybody how good you have been. Today, my brothers and sisters, let all of us have the power of the Holy Spirit on our tongues that with a burning desire on the inside, we can tell everybody about the goodness of the Lord. In Isaiah's day, we find out that there was a king by the name of Uzziah who was sitting on a throne. And because everybody put their focus on this king that was earthly, they could not see the king of kings. We need to remind ourselves it doesn't matter who is sitting in leadership and earthly positions. No matter who sits at the head of any country, whenever we see who is the real king of kings, and that is God Almighty, we'll realize that one day all of them will pass away. There is no earthly king, there is no earthly president that has been serving from the beginning of time to now because they've all passed away. The Bible tells me all of these things shall pass away, but there's one thing that would never shall pass away. That is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and the power of his word. So today, I want to encourage you, Get to know God and know what God has in store for you. And the way you can do that by saying, here am I, send me. I enlist to find out all that you want to teach me, God. I enlist that after I have been taught, I will be a free laborer to go forth to do what you've called me to do. I will let nothing stand in my way. Nothing in my past shall ever stand in front of me because it has all been washed away. Thank you for forgiveness of sins and thank you for allowing me to be one who will say, here am I, send me. I'm so happy that I made that declaration when I was just a teenager. I said, Lord, here am I, send me. And I'm so happy today 
that nearly 40 years later, I'm still able to say, Lord, here am I, send me. I hope all of us can say, here am I, send me. I'll go wherever you have me to go. Isaiah had a mission. Isaiah had a vision. Isaiah had a purpose. God has a mission. God has a purpose. God has a vision for all of us. Let's go where he sends us. And wherever we go, let's tell them about the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords and the power of God's spirit. Today, if you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, all you have to do is say, Father, forgive me. Come into my life. Save me. I want to be your child. I want you to be my savior. And then after you have done that, ask the power of the Holy Spirit to do a great work in you that you may uncover and discover the spiritual gifts that God has in store for you. And if you would love for us as the Fountain of Raleigh to help you as you move forward, all you have to do is email us at join at the fountain of We'll be happy to walk with you as you walk this pilgrim race to know that God will do great and marvelous things with your life. Today, if you desire prayer, we want to pray with you and pray for you. All you have to do is offer your prayer request to us at prayer at the fountain of Raleigh.org. And we will be so happy to pray with you and to pray for you and put your name on our intercessory list as well as your situation. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, we come to say thank you for letting us know that our sins have been taken away. Thank you for the power of what Jesus did for us at Calvary. Thank you for your Holy Spirit's work in our lives. Thank you for being the triune God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit who works in our lives. We commit to you and we cast all of our cares to you because we know you care for us. And God, we ask that you would do the work in us so that we can respond by saying, here am I, send me. So Father, send us where you would have us to go. Now unto him, the great shepherd who gave his life for the sheep. May the Lord bless and preserve and keep you from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. May he bless you and your leisure, your labor, your joy and your sorrow and give you hope for today as well as for tomorrow. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. We'll look forward to seeing you the next time. If you meet a veteran, tell them thank you for your service to God and to country. And God bless their families. We'll see you on tomorrow. To sow a seed to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, visit our newly redesigned website, thefountainofraleigh.org, and select Sow a Seed from the homepage. Also, giving has been made easier with the new Fountain of Raleigh app, available now in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Download today, select Giving from the main menu, and then follow the directions to complete your giving through Subsplash. Thank you so very much for all of your gifts and donations that you've given to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship. We thank you for what you've done in the past, what you're currently doing, and what you will do in the future. Your gifts and donations helps us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only locally, but throughout the world. Thank you again for your gifts, and may God continue to richly bless you. It is here at the Fountain that we believe that we are exceedingly and abundantly blessed, and may you receive those blessings that God has in store for you. Okay.